in relation to the trust cloning, the background is that it was, you know, during the halcyon days up until October 2008, very, very popular. The tax position since then has been that it's impossible without relying on some other concession. So I'm talking, you know, there are situations that we've seen the ability to still do a trust claim historically as long as you could get access to the small business concessions, as long as there were losses elsewhere in the group, as long as there wasn't actually any capital gain, as long as you could rely on rollovers under other provisions, so trading stock provision, whatever the case might be. Interestingly and annoyingly, uh, the stamp duty position is different in every state. So what that has meant is that particularly in places like WA and Queensland, very useful. In Victoria, in relation to business assets, very useful. South Australia, more recently, in relation to business assets, very useful. New South Wales, hopefully, in the not-too-distant future, very useful. The other iteration is that in relation to testamentary trusts, cloning has always been an available strategy. What that actually means, though, in a practical sense, is that you need a bit of a checklist if you're going to be going down this trust cloning path. And I've given you probably the top seven or eight that we think need to be on your checklist to make sure that that cloning is in fact going to be available and useful.